The Great Lakes are the world's largest supply of surface freshwater. Shared by two countries, these massive lakes are a huge asset for foreign trade activities of the United States and Canada. Sadly, a byproduct of all this commercial activity is the rise of pests, biological nuisances, and invaders. Zebra and quagga mussels are the cause of many problems in Lake Erie, including bioaccumulation. Introduced to the Great Lakes system in the late 1980s via ballast water from Russian cargo ships, these invasive mussels have permanently implanted themselves into the Lake Erie ecosystem. What deadly effect that they have triggered is biomagnification due to botulism toxicity. Botulism toxins build up in small fish, larger predatory fish, and waterfowl, eventually killing them because of biomagnification. As the mussels are eaten by fish, more specifically gobies, biomagnification begins to kill larger predatory fish and birds. It is completely natural for waves of botulism to travel through some populations in aquatic ecosystems, but in the 1990s these waves became more frequent and more deadly, especially among larger fish and waterfowl. These trends began in Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, but were soon apparent in all five lakes. This is due in part to the fact that zebra and quagga mussels are extremely efficient filter feeders. They suck massive amounts of water through their gills to obtain their food. Because there are so many mussels on the floor of Lake Erie, their constant feeding can deplete an area's dissolved oxygen content. This creates an anaerobic zone, a botulism hotspot. It is yet another dead fish on this beach. Um, this one is a pretty good size, probably one of the biggest I've seen today, maybe about a foot long. Um, obviously been here for a while, and again, this is about the size of predatory fish that would be eating around goby and building up botulism. Botulism is a naturally occurring anaerobic bacteria in Lake Erie. As the amount of anaerobic zones in the lake increases, so does the botulism population. Mussels eat the bacteria and store the toxins produced by botulism in their fat cells. The toxin is not harmful to the mussels because the amount that they are exposed to is very minimal. However, when the mussels are ingested by round gobies, their main predator and yet another invasive species, the toxin builds up in the bodies of the gobies. Gobies are preyed upon by larger fish, such as smallmouth bass, freshwater drum, sheep's head, shad, trout, and perch, and birds such as loons, grebes, herons, and gulls. Scavengers, like crows, also eat the carcasses of fish that wash up on beaches and then become affected by the botulism toxins. Because the botulism toxins build up in the gobies after they ingest mussels, the toxins are then transferred to whatever predatory fish or bird eats the gobies. The concentration of the toxin is magnified every time it crosses another trophic level. The amount of toxins in the predatory fish and the waterfowl that then feed on fish is exponentially higher than it is in the mussels. Why is this such a problem? An invasive species is not limited to the same environmental constraints and predation as other native species that co-evolved with the environment and other species in the same ecosystem. Quagga mussels are capable of producing 40,000 eggs annually, and a mature, healthy zebra mussel has the capacity to produce 1 million eggs annually. So, this is Headlands State Park. It's protected by a state park on Lake Erie and these are all the zebra mussel shells that washed up on the beach. They are everywhere. Um, they're only about half an inch big. That's what they look like. And they're, they're literally all over the place. Some of them are stuck to each other. This unprecedented rate of growth is the cause for the quick takeover of the North American waterways. Zebra and quagga mussels are also an extremely expensive problem. According to an estimate from the University of Michigan, the control, research, education, prevention, and cleanup costs of the mussels totals upwards of $300 million annually. They have impacted recreational activities and sport fishing because bioaccumulation of botulism has decimated the populations of popular game fish such as bass, perch, and trout. This leads to unsanitary beaches and water conditions.
Many species of waterfowl nest along the coast of Lake Erie and rely on fish, alive and dead, as a source of nutrition. Scavengers, such as gulls and grebes, pick apart dead fish that litter the beaches. If these fish die from botulism toxicity, the birds will then ingest the toxin and become ill as well. This can also harm the birds' offspring if they are feeding the toxic fish to them, because they have a smaller tolerance for such chemicals. Other birds, such as herons and the common loon, eat live fish, like gobies, juvenile smallmouth bass, alewives, and juvenile perch. This bioaccumulation then leads to an exponential magnification of the botulism toxins in their fat cells. They can then fall ill and die. The zebra and quagga mussels have proliferated quickly and have become an established species in the ecosystem. It would be impossible to remove every zebra and quagga mussel from the lakes. Our best option is to prevent the spread of this species and protect the lakes from another alien invasion. A vigilant effort will be needed with the cooperation of many organizations such as the Federal Trade Commission. But there is no way that we can stop using cargo ships for international trade. It's economically not feasible. But movements are being made to create stricter regulations on international trade to promote clean shipping and ballast water. Increasing public awareness to, would prevent boaters and other recreationalists from unknowingly transporting mussels to other lakes on boat hauls on the lake. Another mechanism would be the physical barrier between lakes such as copper gates, which prevent mussels from moving at will between adjoining waterways. Such regulations would be costly, but they are a smart investment in the future of the Lake Erie ecosystems and recreational activities. As long as the spread of invasive species begins to slow and the public becomes more educated, the impacts caused by these alien killers will start to level off. There is no way of removing every single muscle from Lake Erie. We can only hope that the environment will begin to heal itself and that the impact of botulism toxicity on the Lake Erie ecosystem will become less severe with the passage of time. Here comes the sun, I say, it's alright.